Welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, then this video might come as like a, I guess like a surprise or kind of like, what? If you aren't new to my channel, then this is more so of a long overdue or long awaited video because it's something I've always been open and honest about wanting to get. And yes, you are reading the title of this video correctly. I am getting a breast augmentation. Before I even get into who, what, where, like all of the details, I just want to give a disclaimer. I, I wish I didn't have to, but I feel like I should. If you are not a fan of breast augmentations or cosmetic procedures in general, I completely understand and this video may not be for you. This entire video is going to be on just that topic. So um, if it makes you uncomfortable or something you don't like, don't believe in, etc., then you might want to exit this video. I just want to put that out there. And I do really say that in the nicest way possible. I respect your decision. I And I just respect, obviously, my audience to respect my decision as well. This is kind of a, a big thing. It's a very vulnerable moment that I was very iffy on whether or not I wanted to share in the first place. And me personally, I'm deciding to put myself on here and be open and honest about what I'm about to experience. I want to take this moment as an educational one and share my experience and be very thorough with exactly what I'm getting, where I'm going, how much. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So I'll first start off the video with the why. Why am I getting a breast augmentation slash boob job? This is something, and I'm not even kidding you guys, this is something that I have been wanting for years. I want to say I probably started considering it around the age of like 18, 19, and I'm now 26 years old. So it's been almost like, it's been almost 10 years that I was kind of thinking about it. I would always tell my mom, just wait, when I get older, or when I save my money, I'm going to go out and get a breast augmentation. Like I would always say that, always say that, always. I don't even know if it was 18. I don't know why. I feel like it was maybe even earlier than that. Growing up, I was I was pretty flat chested. And when I say flat chested, I mean like flat chested. I specifically remember taking, you remember how we used to take those photos at the swamp meet with our cousins or with our friends and stuff? Well, I remember taking a photo and we were wearing these spaghetti strap shirts and I was wearing a bra. I was wearing a push, like a little padded, not a push-up bra, but like a little padded bra. And I really wanted to wear it for the pictures because if I didn't, it was gonna look really flat. But my mom was like, no, you should take it off because you can see the straps, blah, blah, blah. So I took it off and looking back, I always just remember what I was thinking in the moment that I was like, this just, I don't like this. Obviously years would go by, years would go by. And it was something that I always was self-conscious about, but with me, whenever I'm self-conscious about something, I never like to talk about it often or highlight it because the more you talk about it, the more people pay attention to it. So it's just one of those things that you ha you notice and you have in the back of your mind and you think about it all the time. But I try not to express it, how I feel about it too much. Now growing up, I didn't get made fun of or anything like that. So it was never anything about what other people were telling me. This is something that I am solely doing for myself because of the way that I feel about it. I just want to make that very clear. I'm not doing it because of what I was told when I was a little girl. I'm not doing this because of what social media thinks or people saying anything because people don't really tell me anything about that stuff. So I'm not doing it for like social media. I'm literally doing this for me. And I think when I first told my mom, she asked me to like, why? Like, why is it you know, something that you want to do. Are people making fun of you? And I was like, no, like people are not really making fun of me. This is just something that I'm not comfortable with myself. And I'm, I like to say I'm a pretty confident person. And I like to portray that to you guys as well, to be confident in your own body and with what you have, work with what you have is what I always say, right? And I've always done that. Like I've always worked with what I had and I've always felt good about myself and I love my body. This is definitely an enhancement. There are a lot of enhancements that people do, of course. 
two different severities. This is obviously a breast augmentation, which is different than going out and getting your teeth done, but it's along those lines. It's an enhancement. Does that mean I don't love my body? Absolutely not. I actually love my body now and I'm gonna love it even more so when I do get my breast augmentation. I'm not nervous about the procedure. I was more so nervous to come on here and film the video. I'm like, I don't even know what I wanna say. I don't even know like how I'm gonna do it. And I was more so nervous to tell my mom as well just because I was scared of the reaction or what she was going to say. And I was also scared to tell some of my family members. But what I'm trying to get at with this is that when I told my mom, she literally didn't have a negative reaction whatsoever it was more so like she already knew it was coming and she was very very supportive about it and she didn't ask me why she didn't need to ask me why because she already knew it was more so a moment of like okay finally you know so then i was also nervous to tell my cousins and tell my aunts and and my family members and again same reaction when i told them they my aunt the first thing she said my madrina was this is something that you have been wanting ever since you were younger. And everyone seemed very excited and supportive about it, which I don't know why I was just expecting, like I was so nervous and scared because I have I have a Mexican family, like about those kind of subjects are kind of touchy. So when I told them they were like all for it and supportive, I was just really, it made me that much more excited. It always helps when you have a really, you know, good support system in that sense. I'm so nervous, like I feel like I'm struggling to talk, but yes. So that's kind of the why. It's something that I've been wanting ever since I was younger and here we are kind of still sticking to the why so i am getting my breast augmentation more so for fullness and for some volume and i am trying to keep it looking as natural as possible i don't want to do too much i don't want it to look like it's an obvious boob job now of course the first few months it's going to look very from all the research i've done the videos i've watched and also from my doctor it's gonna look very like whoa because they're gonna be like lifted and a little bit swollen they need to settle and all of that drop and everything so it's gonna look a little bit different but i'm going for that more natural look of course so i'll jump into exactly what i'm getting so i'm getting a this is the technical term i'm getting a bilateral silicone subpectoral augmentation mammoplasty that's what it's called aka breast augmentation. To my understanding, there are two different types of implants. There's silicone and there's saline. So me, I'm doing the silicone implant, which is more of the thick gel consistency, and the saline implant is more so the water-filled looking consistency. There are pros and cons to both. So I highly suggest doing a lot more research in that sense and seeing what you think would work best for you and your body. I chose the silicone just because the silicone used nowadays is a lot safer, obviously, than the ones that they used to use years ago. It's definitely evolved. So for saline, if the saline one were to rupture, the liquid inside will just kind of spill out and it won't be painful or anything like that, but it will flatten out the chest it will flatten out that boob pretty much whereas if you get the silicone the silicone is thick so i think at the center that i go to they only use the gummy bear ones which th if you think about it when you get a gummy bear and you split it in half it's not liquidy nothing comes out the gel or what it's made of it just tears in the middle and it stays in place that's what the silicone implants are like so it's a very thick gel even if it were to rupture for whatever reason it won't spill not only are they a lot safer they are a lot more natural looking as well because they kind of form a little more to the boob whereas the saline one is like a, a balloon filled with water and it kind of stays that that way and there are also different textures in implants which i didn't even know about until i went in there and they explained it to me so there's a smooth implant and then there's a newer textured implant so the textured implant is a, also a lot more natural looking and the textured one tends to kind of grip onto the walls that it's around the the chest wall 
and it stays in place. So they say when you get breast implants, if you're laying on your back, that they tend to kind of separate. The textured ones are supposed to help reduce that. And then there's a smooth implant, which is the one that I decided I'm going to do, which is kind of like the OG, the original kind of implant. It's just smooth. It's like the regular round one. That's the one that I decided to go with. It's not necessarily a huge difference. That's actually what the doctor told me. That's not a huge difference. It's just preference. Like if you want it to kind of stay in place. And again, there are a lot of pros and cons to both of those. And I really read through them and based on kind of like what I want, I would prefer the original just smooth implant. Going even deeper into it, I told you guys, I want to be as informative as possible. Because these are things that I didn't, I didn't even know about when I was looking for YouTube videos and stuff that a lot of people don't really explain. So even deeper than that, there are three different types of smooth implants. So I'm getting the middle grade, well at least at the center I'm going to, there are three different smooth ones. So I'm getting the middle grade one, which is not too firm and not too loose. And I think that would work for my body type, like my height, my weight, and that's an important factor as well. I think the middle grade one is good because if I were to get the one that's a little bit looser and more like soft, yes it does feel more natural to the touch, but it can also cause a little bit more rippling, which is definitely a thing with breast implants. If you don't pick the right one, it can cause ripples. The one that's more firm gives you more of that rounded out shape, which is also something I don't want. And think, thinking about it, I think the middle one just kind of makes the most sense for me. I don't want to do too much of either one. And then the last thing I think when it comes to picking your implant is what type of profile you want. There's moderate. I want. I don't know if there's one lower than moderate, but at the one that I'm going to, there's moderate, moderate plus, I think, and high profile. I'm going with a moderate profile as of right now. That's what I'm deciding. I definitely 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 and i made this like i made this decision from the jump i for me and the look i want to go for i do not want to do a high profile a high profile means that it's from the side it's very it sticks out a lot more it's higher and it's also higher up here so you would be able to tell a little bit more in this area and that's what I don't want because on my body type, since I don't have, I actually don't have much, like, I can't even pinch my skin. If I were to do a high profile on my body type because I'm slim, you will be able to tell from up here that I have breast implants. And I don't want that look for me. The moderate profile is going to... It's gonna give more of that teardrop look and most of the implant is going to be on the bottom of my boob, which is exactly what I want. My stats will be in the description box, but my height, I'm 5'7", and I actually weighed myself, which I haven't done in a while, and I weigh 135, so that kind of gives you a good idea of where I'm at. I'm tall and I'm not too slender and slim i have a little bit to work with and then for cc's just when you thought it was complicated enough uh, we're going to talk about cc's cc's is what is going to determine what size your breasts will be and me i'm as of right now i'm kind of between 350 and 375 at first, I was like, I kind of want to do 375. It's not much of a difference, but I'm teeter-tottering between those two because I'm not exactly sure what a 375cc looks like. When I went into the office to get my consultation and my pre-op stuff done, I did try on a 300cc and I tried on a 350cc. And at first, when I tried the 300 that was the first one that I had tried and I was like, oh my gosh, like, yes, I like how this looks. It looks like how my boobs look when I'm wearing a push-up bra, but I, I was thinking about it and I'm like, I don't think that's going to give me as much fullness and cleavage as I want, especially since now I probably won't have to wear a bra as often. 
So I was like, I think a 350 would be a really nice medium. And I tried the 350 on and I was like, okay. At first I was like, oh, it looks kind of big. I'm not sure. But I think a 350 will be fine, especially once they settle. I think it's, my, even my mom too, I told her, she was like, yeah, if you did the 300, you might, you might regret it and kind of wish you would have done a little bit more because once they settle, they'll, they're going to look different. So I might stick to the 350. I still have to go into the office and try both on and like really, really see. Keep in mind that CCs are more important than cup size and CCs are going to look different on everybody. So me getting a 350 CC implant would look way different on somebody who is, you know, five foot one and weighs like 108 pounds. It's gonna look way different. It also varies on their current breast breast size so me i didn't tell you guys but me right now i'm a 34a i'm a 34a cup even then if i wear a 34a that's not padded i barely 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 feel it if somebody is a b cup before and they get a 350 cc implant it's gonna look a lot bigger on them because they already have some boobage to work with it is helpful to know what bra size you want to go up to though i think that's super helpful so me i'm a 34a and i want to go up to a c maybe even up to a full c but i don't want to go past that and based on that those are kind of the cc's that i'm looking for for my body type they're doing construction next door so hopefully you guys can't hear that once you decide those details then you also need to decide okay do i want to do it over the muscle or under the muscle and i think there's a middle part too like i think you can do half over half under i'm not exactly sure how that works but for me i already knew i wanted to do it under the muscle and under the muscle it pretty much you have an extra layer you have that layer of muscle over top of the implant so it's going to give you even more of a natural look be because it kind of disguises the implant the implant is like under under there whereas you were if you were to do it over the muscle the healing process is a lot quicker i think the healing process is within like a few days which is good but it's not going to be as natural looking because the implant is literally going to be like right under the skin. I'd rather, you know, take the punches and kind of have to have a longer recovery time. The recovery time is only a few more days. So I'll probably be recovering for like a week. Whereas if you were to do it over the muscle, the recovery time is a few days, which is not a big difference. That's why I'm deciding to do it under the muscle. And I did ask, this is something I made sure to ask from the jump. I was like, if I were to do this, 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 and this, I gave all the details I wanted, will I be able to still breastfeed in the future? And they were like, yes, you will be able to still breastfeed. I don't have kids, so that's something that's also good to take into consideration based on you know how my boobs look right now. This is the last thing we're gonna touch on as far as like the surgery details and breast implant details. There are different incisions that you can decide on. You can do your incisions under the breast fold. You can do it through the armpit. You can do it through the nipple, or you can do it through your belly button. The belly button and the armpit seem very uncomfortable to me, and I just don't even know. So I'm sticking to doing it from under the breast fold, you will not be able to see the incisions and you will not be able to see the scarring because obviously I'll have boobs by then and the boobs are gonna be over the incision. Like literally the incision they say is tiny and it's gonna be in the fold so you won't be able to tell. Uh, even after though, like a few years, the scar fades and then it's, you really won't be able to see it. Where am I going? So I am going to San Diego actually to get my boobs done and I actually live in the LA area. So I am going to, well not me, but we're going to drive out there and stay the entire day of my surgery and then until the day after just so I can have my follow-up appointment with my doctor. The construction's really annoying. But I'm getting my breast augmentation at the La Jolla Cosmetic surgery center let me tell you how i even found this place to begin with and why i'm doing it there back when i was in college at cal state long beach i specifically also remember 
driving down PCH and I was thinking about like where would I where would I get my boobs done if I ever were ever to get them I don't know why these are just car driving thoughts like literally I was I was approaching the school and I, it came to my mind so I parked my car I was early to class that day a lot of times I would just sit in there and eat or be on my phone or whatever so I was in my car looking on Yelp and looking on Google and looking at different places around the LA area of course like Beverly Hills and all that and then I looked more in the surrounding cities and I just so happened to find this place in San Diego and ever since that day which was a few years back ever since that day I've had them saved in my Yelp and I've every few years like I would go in and I would check just to see like okay is this still somewhere I would go I just knew that that was a place I wanted to go to when I decided I didn't care if I had to take the drive out there and stay out there for however many days I just knew that that's where I wanted to go once I found the place I of course saved it and then I did a little bit more research and looked at all the doctors that worked there I want to say right now there are a total of like four or five doctors that do specialize in breast augmentation out of the five there were two doctors that really 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 stood out to me just based on their before and after photos like i said in the beginning i'm going for a very natural looking boob i want it to fit my frame and i want it to be very flattering for my body type i don't want it to be too much and the way i'm thinking of it is like looking at myself at this on the side view I want my boobs and my butt to both look, you know, symmetrical because when I look in the mirror right now, it's like flat and then my little booty like sticks out. So I want it to be a nice balance. And looking at the doctors on there, Dr. Saltz and Dr. Smoot are the two doctors that I really like. So fast forward to the beginning of this year when I decided to finally make my call and be like, boom, I have my money. I want to do it. Let's go. So fast forward to then, I spoke to Rihanna, which she is absolutely amazing. I've been texting her back and forth and we've been chatting ever since then. When I first called and spoke to her, she told me uh, what it was like and she asked me who I wanted to do it with. And I was like, well, I'm kind of in a predicament. I have two different doctors that I really, really, really like and I'm not sure who to pick. And when I told her the two doctors that I had in mind, she was like, that is so crazy that you chose those two because they are the two doctors in our facility that are the most alike. And that's coming from me, somebody who has pretty much no idea about like the technical stuff when it comes to surgeries and boob jobs and all that. But the fact that you're able to see it in their photos is everything. They do the most like natural looking breasts and exactly what i'm going for so i'm so glad that i was able to notice that right off the bat so i knew right off the bat like, okay i know like i know what i want okay then <laughs> like that's good she told me okay from those two since they're very similar it's more so who you are gonna feel more comfortable with based on you can either speak to them or meet them etc so i actually had decided, you know what, I'm, I think I'm gonna do it with Dr. Saltz. And so I went in for my consultation slash pre-op and did it with Dr. Saltz, she is so sweet. Scheduling kind of changed, so I decided I'm gonna end up doing it with Dr. Smoot. Either way, either route I think is an amazing route. If you were to look at their before and after photos, like they are both incredible with the results. So I'm, I'm really happy to do it with either one. So the scheduling fit a little bit better with Dr. Smoot. So that's who I'm going to do it with. Something I want to mention that's very important. All of the doctors at the La Jolla Cosmetic Center are all board certified. All of the anesthesiologists at their center, all of them are board certified certified which is important to note you don't want to make your decision based on how cheap or expensive a doctor is because if you go with a cheaper doctor and they're not board certified you are literally risking risking it all like you have no idea what can go 
down. Getting any type of surgery, there are already risks that come with that. So you want to make sure you're doing it with somebody who knows what they're doing, not just that, who's certified, board certified to do it. That's super, super, super important. So yeah, Dr. Smoot, he is board certified by the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery, and he has been ever since 1990. And of course, he's performed many, many breast augmentation surgeries. He doesn't just specialize in that, but obviously that's the one thing that I looked into because that's what I'm doing. Definitely go with your gut when it comes to picking your doctor. Make sure their mannerisms and the way they speak to you about what you want is like top notch. Not only that, make sure they're nurses and overall the customer service, make sure that it's good because that's all going to reflect on the type of experience you have during your surgery and after because after your surgery once you come off of anesthesia you obviously will have to be with the nurse so getting to meet their nurse is also really really important let's talk about when i'm getting my procedure done and let's talk about the cost because i feel like that's one of the things that a lot of you probably want to know so when am i getting it done i'm actually pre-filming this video which is why i don't know like what he sees and all of that just yet but by the time i post this video i will either be in surgery or already out of getting my surgery and i wanted to wait to post the video now that way i can give you guys a very quick follow-up so i am planning on vlogging my experience like from that day the recovery the following days a week after and putting that all in a vlog so you guys can see the process. So that's why I wanted to wait until now to post. I've actually known that I was going to get my breast. Well, I've known for years, obviously. But I knew that this was scheduled ever since the beginning of the year. So I've been holding it in. And I've been like, I've been wanting to talk about it. But then I'm like, no, I've got to wait. But yes, finally, I'm able to tell you guys that I'm doing it. Now let's talk about the cost. Um, so... Breast augmentations, of course, can vary, but I'm not going to give you the, the varying. I'm going to tell you how much mine is, and I'm going to tell you how much they, like the rough estimate of how much they would cost at the surgery center that I'm going to, which is one thing that I personally loved about them right off the bat is they give you estimates on their website, which a lot of people do not do that a lot of people make you go in and get a consultation and then they try to convince you to get it and it's like you just want to know an average of the price of what they cost there for what the results are to me it makes me feel a lot more at ease that they're not trying to hide their prices at first when i went on there i kind of checked you know what i wanted and saline versus silicone is a price difference so based on what i searched it was around 6500 to 8500 When I went into the office as well, that's what she told me. It's going to be around 6500 to 8500 And then when I chose what I wanted in there, my total ended up being right in the middle. is 7500 for everything that I told you guys that I'm getting, which is a pretty penny. It's an investment. And something that I would highly recommend is to save as much as you can, to pay as much as you can, or to pay it all at your pre-op appointment before you get your surgery done. Now, if you're like, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Like I'm never gonna get a breast augmentation. How am I supposed to save that much and have it all at the time? You don't have to have it all at the time. Here at the center that I'm going to, and most places they do have credit. So you can sign up to get pretty much a loan with them. And if you want, you can put a down payment. So let's say, let's say your procedure is $6,000, let's just say. And if you want to put half of it down, you put 3,000 and the rest of the 3,000 you want to make in payments, you can do that as well. It's a lot of information, I know, but we're almost there. So this is pretty much all information that you would find out after having a consultation or speaking to somebody at the facility. So I found all this out, obviously, at my consultation. I ended up doing my consultation and my pre-op appointment all in one day because I already knew where I wanted to go. I already had narrowed down the doctors that I wanted. So I was able, and I already knew for sure that I was going to do this. So I was able to do both in one, especially since it is about an hour and a half, two hour drive. 
I wanted to kind of squeeze it in all in one day. So we did my consultation and there I was able to try on the different sizes. And the way it works is you try on the, you don't try on the circle one that I show in the video. You try on kind of like a chicken cutlet. It's like a half slit. They put it into one of the bras that they have that clips in the front. You put it, you put the implant in there and then you put on a shirt or you put on the jacket or whatever you were wearing when you first came in. That way you can see exactly what it looks like with your clothes over top and you can get a really good feel of what you're going for. And then you can go up or down in size and try different ones on. And I do have to say that it was such a seamless process. Like I didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, like I have to choose right now or whatever. Even like when I'm filming this, like I said, I still don't know what size. And even that day, they told me that I'll be able to speak to Dr. Smoot and still try on the two different sizes and really get to decide. And he'll help me like give, he'll give me advice and tell me, okay, which one he thinks would fit best. They took measurements, they had me stand up and they measured like from here to here. They measured from here to here, from here to here. I think they measure like the nipple, they measure everything. They obviously your height, your weight to determine what would be the most ideal breast size. And then from there you, I mean implant size. And from there you decide if you wanna move up or down. They took me to another room and then I started my pre-op appointment. All the nitty gritty things you're gonna need on the day of your surgery, your prescriptions, um what else like i have an they gave me an entire booklet of things to go through we talked about preparing for surgery medications to avoid before your surgery what it's like going into their operating room anesthesia general surgical risks specific surgical risks consents literally everything the day of surgery so your time is scheduled but I would personally recommend to have just that entire day free. Even if they tell you your appointment is at two o'clock, I would still have that entire morning available just in case things change. Not only that, but to also give yourself time to like breathe and relax before going into your surgery. And then the day of your surgery, you do want to make sure, well, before we even get to that, a few days, be a week or to two weeks before you want to not be really drinking alcohol that's not something they recommended to me but that's just something that i've stopped doing and also obviously limiting exercise just because i don't want to go in super sore and then come out of surgery being even more sore and i'm just going to be torturing myself so i would i would definitely limit that as well you want to make sure that you get your prescriptions filled and this is something that i did as soon as i got as soon as they gave it to me the next day i went in got it filled and then i just had it all ready to go with me because i didn't want to forget for whatever reason the night before surgery you do want to shower and wash your body specifically from neck down with their antibacterial soap and they did also give me this bar that i'm supposed to use and you can't put on lotion deodorant nothing like that you could wash your face with like your normal face wash and your hair, but from the neck down, you have to use what they give you and you have to use an antibacterial soap like Dial. The day of, the morning of surgery, which my surgery is super early. My surgery, I think is at 6 a.m. So we're gonna have to wake up at like four. Morning of surgery, again, same thing. Shower from here down, scrub, scrub, scrub with the antibacterial soap and then with the one that they gave me. No deodorant, no body lotion, no jewelry nothing Ooh, it's getting dark in here i just realized should i turn on my light let me turn on the light bed linen do you want to make sure to wash all of your sheets you're getting surgery so you want to make sure the sheets and the blankets that you're laying in and stuff are nice and clean and then for me well even though we're staying at a hotel obviously when i get back home i want to make sure the bed linens are clean and i also am getting a neck pillow i was gonna order a full-on like the pregnancy pillows like squared long ones I was like, no, I'm doing too much. So I'm gonna just get a neck pillow because you have to sit up after your surgery. You can't lay on your side, you can't lay on your stomach. Um, you can't eat or drink anything after 12 midnight the night before the surgery. You can't have water, gum, candy, or mints is what it says. And then for the day of the surgery, 
You want to make sure to have your cell phone on deck just in case they call you for whatever reason or if there's a time change or whatever which is why i say you want to just take that whole day off if you take a daily medication if there's a medication you have to take every single day uh, you do want to let them know of that you want to make sure to let them know any vitamins or any medication that you take the day of your pre-op appointment those are things that they all want to know just in case there are any medications that clash so make sure to let them know but if there is a daily pill that you have to take they might tell you it's okay to take a sip of water that morning with your medicine and that's it but i would just double check with your doctor also the day of surgery i was told to wear something comfortable maybe like sweatpants or leggings super cozy and comfortable on the top to make sure to wear something that unzips from the front so it's easy to get in and out of after your surgery you're not going to be able to lift your arms past like probably past like this point because it's going to be very sore so you're not going to be able to lift your arms up to put a sweater on you also need somebody with you you cannot drive yourself to and from your surgery you have to have somebody with you that is going to drive you there you can drive there if you want i personally wouldn't want to the day of my surgery but you can drive there you just will not be able to drive back and you won't be able to drive for i think three to five days is what it says if you wear contact lenses you cannot wear them the day of surgery you have to go in you're gonna have to go in with your glasses and then remove them for the surgery like i said you cannot wear any jewelry if you are on your period the day of your surgery you could wear a tampon but you're going to have to change it before the surgery and then keep in mind after your surgery you're not going to be able to move your arms much so a tampon might not be the best option if anything i would recommend wearing a pad as that's a little bit easier to maneuver than a tampon and of course they are going to take a pregnancy test right before the surgery to make sure you are not childbearing because you cannot go under anesthesia and get surgery if you are pregnant so i'm going to tell you now a list of things i think this is most of the stuff medications operating recovering some things to also keep in mind when it comes to the surgery is the possibility of the risks and things that can happen be be very informed on all of that be informed on you know the breast implant illness be informed on what happens if it ruptures what are you supposed to do be informed on if one is lower than the other significantly after surgery like you need to go to the doctor and let them know asap be informed on all of that because there are risks when it comes to any cosmetic procedure and any surgery whether it's cosmetic or not also with that know your health history it's very important uh for me i made sure to go into the doctor soon before i was planning on getting this done because i wanted to make sure my vital signs were good my blood pressure make sure to tell your surgeon about your health history and be honest because you just don't know how your health history can affect or how your body can be affected by your health history and getting a surgery on top of that i do want to read the helpful items for after your surgery because i think this is very helpful as well things that you are going to need in order to recover. First thing on the list is peace and quiet, which is so important. It is recommended to take an entire week off after getting a procedure done. I have heard some people say that they go back after two, three days of, of having the procedure done. Just depends on how your body's feeling and obviously what type of procedure you get. Vitamin C, it's recommended to take a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. Um, I want to say two, one or two weeks before your surgery. Multivitamins as well, like a one a day multivitamin. Drinking lots of water. Juices, I've heard papaya juice is good. Pineapple juice to help with bruising and swelling. Uh, protein drinks. After the surgery, you can't really eat right off the bat because you're under anesthesia and you might be nauseous, things like that. I'm like crossing my fingers that I don't throw up because I cannot stand throwing up. I hope it's like a smooth transition for me and that it's, it doesn't get to that point. But after you're under anesthesia, there may be nausea and you may not be able to hold food down. So it's recommended to have stuff like a protein drink. It also says uh, crackers. I bought, I'll show you what I bought right now. But crackers, chicken broth, soup, like rice, very something very light. Straws, which I had 
I don't think a lot of people mention this, but straws that bend because you're not going to be able to lift your arm to like drink something. So if you have a straw, you can easily just like, and then like, you know, it's easier than having to lift your arm because remember you can't lift your arm. Uh, with the crackers, make sure they're low sodium. You're not going to be able to move much, so you want to kind of watch what you're intaking at the moment and try to eat as healthy as possible. So low sodium crackers, low sodium chicken broth, beef broth, jello as well is a very nice light thing to have after surgery. And then ice packs, frozen peas, something to help with if swelling if you feel like you want to ice your chest. You can do that and then ziploc bags if you are going to be using ice you want to have something to put the ice in extra strength tylenol they do give you pain medication but if you don't want to take the pain medication that they give you and you want to see if your body can handle it on its own or if you want to do something like tylenol you can do that a laxative you are going to need a laxative because you're taking pain medication which can cause constipation and you don't want constipation when you are in discomfort pain possibly soreness frozen meals you're not gonna be able to be up cooking for the most part at least not the first few days so you want to have like little frozen meals or if you have somebody that can go get you food or make you something really quick and i think the last thing is arnica which helps with bruising and swelling and that's recommended to start taking it two days before your surgery they gave me my own little bag here and in here it has those two surgical scrub brushes that I was saying these are the ones I'm gonna have to use to wash my body the day before and the morning of my surgery they also gave me arnica they gave me the dietary supplement the little capsules and they gave me a little topical one. Oh, she gave me a scar recovery gel as well so i can put it underneath to help fade the scars and they also gave me a voucher which i thought was nice a 25 dollars voucher to go back and get like a facial or something for doing my paperwork online so i have some bottled waters in here because obviously i'm gonna need to stay nice and hydrated i have no idea how i'm gonna be after surgery and i don't want to make darius go and like rush and get waters and leave me by myself so i just want to have some here just in case and then i have this chicken broth you could eat solid foods after you you're able to hold this down or jello down then you can go ahead and start eating solid foods just depending on how your stomach reacts my antibacterial soap i have three in here laxative and i have my extra strength tylenol which key something that's not on the list but i think that you might want to get is well obviously the neck pillow which is something that's really good to have if you don't want to be stacking up pillows or be uncomfortable also these shower sheets i found these at target from the brand uni you're not going to be able to shower i think until the day after surgery but i just know myself i'm going to be scared to shower even one to two days after just because i'm not going to want to get it wet so i'll probably do like a body shower with these and then i'll be able to like rinse my face and stuff i also have jello i just got most of this stuff at walmart four pack of jello strawberry is my favorite and some hint of salt low sodium ritz crackers and these are all things that i don't have to refrigerate the only thing i do have to worry about is heating this up most hotels have a microwave and i'm gonna obviously call and make sure but these are all things i don't really have to worry about refrigerating i can just have these things as i do in my little grocery shopping bag oh i forgot to mention i don't think i even said this yeah it's mentioned to take carbonated drinks in case you are nauseous so i bought this little mini pack of sprites they're the small ones in case i feel nauseous and i want to have something if you want you can maybe go on like amazon or go to walmart and buy those bras that have the clips in the front if you want to try different ones on and you don't want to wear the one that they give you there just so you have other options i'm not going to buy one i think i'm just going to wear the one that they give me so that's pretty much the entire rundown that's a lot of information i talked so much the sun even went down and it started raining but I want to give you guys a before look at what my boobs look like right now before anything. So I'm just wearing a sports bra, regular sports bra. You can see that I don't have 
any cleavage when I have nothing or when I wear a sports bra. There's literally nothing right here, no fullness up here whatsoever. Most of the fullness is down here. I do have some breast tissue under here. So here, if I push it down, you can see that there's like a little bit of tissue as well, depending on what angle you're at. Before, when I tell you guys before I was flat chested, like I literally mean that this little, this gap that you see all the way down here was non-existent. Like it was literally nothing. And I'm so glad that I waited until now to get my breast augmentation because at the time if I would have done it I would have I feel like I would have had no breast tissue to work with whereas now I think it would look a lot better. So I'm not completely flat chested but I'm, I don't really have volume up here and I have no cleavage. If I wore a shirt without any type of bra there's nothing so yeah that's there. Here is like a side view. That's my before. I'm really looking forward to what this process is going to be like and to bring you guys along with me. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love y'all. Let's get on with y'all. And I'll see you all in my next video with my new boobies. <laughs>